Hey guys, Kev here, and I have a really fun uh, video for you. I'm gonna unbox some new Devo knives prototypes. So, I've been waiting to get these out of the box. I've just been very busy lately. These come from Best Tech Knives. So, we have new prototypes from Best Tech. This model is called the Bender. We haven't shown this model before, I think. Um, it says Best Tech Man on there. It has some stickers. Uh, I think that's what this is. We're going to be positive in a second. They're definitely not Best Tech Man knives. Oh, unless they're... No, they're... Yeah, they just threw that sticker on there, I guess. I don't know. I think we ordered... Four. There should be four versions, one of which is left-handed, which is really cool. Um, they didn't mark them, so let's just get into the first one. The Bender from Devo Knives. Get ready, folks. I'm hoping it's good. So, this is the Bender. Check it out. Let me know what you guys think of that milling pattern. On this model, we went with a uh, liner lock, but we did a steel liner lock this time. Last time we used Best Tech for a liner lock, we did the Buzz, and we did a titanium liner lock with steel insert, which is really cool, but the problem with it is it makes it thicker, and the Buzz ended up being a little over half an inch, I think, and um, we wanted, we like our knives to be under that. We like our knives to be 0 0.47, 0 0.48, something like that. This looks and feels really, really good. The size, I really like this size. I think it's a little bit bigger or smaller than, um, I guess not. I thought we went smaller than this. Um, I thought it was smaller than the Stout, but maybe I'm misremembering. But anyway, let's uh, give it a flick. Here's the centered blade. You have a nice milled pocket clip internally mounted. Feels good. T8s, of course. Pivot collar. Hole for deployment. Oh, yeah. Oh, she good, baby. She good. You have a hollow ground spear foot blade. More sheep's foot than spear point, but I like to say spear, uh, spear foot, so. Oh my God. Oh my good. It's already thin. You add that, oh my good. It's thin as hell. You have a flat right here, so you can choke up on this puppy. You have Vox style jimping. We love our Vox style. Oh my God, this is really good, guys. We have a S90V blade steel. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, shit. Titanium backspacer. Titanium handles. Wow. That was me. Wow. Lock bar access is solid. Plunge grind? I know nothing. You guys tell me what you think. It looks like... Obviously, it dives off a cliff right here, but... Not sure this plunge grind is perfect. You guys are the experts on that, not us. But it looks like it terminates right behind the edge. But it might be better if there was just a notch there, maybe, right? But then they'll be like, we can't do the hollow grind. We have to do a flat grind, and it's always some bullshit when you when, when you want to fix stuff like that. Uh, we'll figure it out, but yeah, I don't think that looks perfect. Because um, I think if you sharpened it, you're going to have a smile right there, right? And that's the issue. Uh, it is an internal stop pin. Yep, internal stop pin. Wow, that's beautiful. So this is the... Uh, Raw tie with stonewash blade version. So this is the Colin version, basically. 
Um, let's see, what else we got? We have one that I think you guys are really going to like. Something you guys have asked for for a while. Um, you'll see that probably, I'll show that one last. Here is a blue tie with black wash. This is DLC from uh, Best Tech. Black accents. Beautiful. I mean, this might be one of the, this might be one of the better uh, prototype designs we've done. Usually, you know, there's a lot of stuff we want to change. Uh, lock bar access and stuff like that. But, they, man, these are dialed the fuck in. Maybe that plunge grind. I'd like to get expert opinion on that before I start trying to change shit. But, man, that hollow feels so good. I'm guessing it's sharp as fuck. Yeah. I mean, it's paper, but you can see... And it fucking fires, too. Detent is uh, good. It's not, like, super strong. I don't think it needs to be. It's a hole-only knife, obviously. Um, obviously, I wouldn't wouldn't be bothered if it was a little stronger, but it's not, like, weak. You know what I mean? You're not... I don't think you're shaking it out. Nah. And, I mean... Whew, it's really good. On the inside of the uh, liner, it's going to say uh, Devo Knives, OEM'd by Best Tech. We've been trying to do that when we use different OEMs now. So that's the blue one. Let me see if I can get the lefty one here. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. We're going in order of what I wanted to do. So this is the uh, left-handed version. We'll see how they did on that. Last time they did a lefty for us, they screwed up. And they did the, uh, I think they got it this time. Yeah, last time on a budget knife, they did a lefty prototype. They put the right-handed scales on, basically. So the lock bar access was on the wrong side. So this one has bronze-ish, like light bronze accents on the hardware see that black clip black dlc titanium handles this one's going to be your belt satin version and this is the lefty version but it'll give you an idea of how that belt satin hollow grind will look oh my god that is gorgeous <laughs> Man, it just drops. Just feels so smooth. No play. Fires. Nice. It's not a choil, but it is. It's a flat choil. Perfect. Box jumping, at least for my hands. Love the uh, swedge right here. It's kind of an homage to the stout on that. It's got some stout to it. But definitely more mainstream design, more spear footy. Oh my god. That is sexy as hell. Love the milling pattern that Colin chose on this one. This design is very much a Colin design. Um, you know, I definitely got some input in on it and all that, but this one is a brainchild, a Colin brainchild. Um, I think this one started with the concept that I wanted to do a spearfoot blade. We, as as Devo Knives, we have not done a spearfoot blade yet. Um, and that's kind of Colin's calling card, in my opinion, is the spearfoot blade. And uh, he's done some with, 
you know, the license designs he's done, but not with Devo. So that was kind of the idea here. And then he um, went from there and killed it. Yeah, the size is, is really good. Um, it's, a, it's definitely in between, I think. Let me grab a stout. Then I'll show you the awesome one. So here is a uh, Lefty Stout B2. We do have more of these in production right now, actually. And look at that. It's actually about the same size. I don't know why, but I thought we... I thought most of our stuff was smaller now, but maybe I just... We have so many things going on. I just thought this was more like a 3.1 inch blade, but... Looks like it's more. Where's the ruler? From the handle. Yeah. 3.3. So this is a stout sized knife, buzz sized knife, which I think most people will be happy with because it's pretty much fits everybody's hand, you know? I just like smaller stuff myself. Oh my God, I'm gonna carry the shit out of this thing. Look at that, dude. All right, here's the freaking sweet one. So a lot of people have been asking us to do a dressed up knife. And we have finally done it. Here it is. This is the Bender Baller Edition. You have Zerkutai Clip, Zerkutai Collars, Zerkutai Backspacer, DLC Scale, DLC Titanium Hardware, and then you have a Damasteel Blade. So... I forget which one we went with. Is this Thor's something? Or we really aren't, we're not really that big into Damasteel. So unfortunately, I don't know the names of all the steels, but they gave us some options. This is the one Colin and I agreed we both liked. And I think we chose well, because this looks freaking amazing. Um, and I might be a Damasteel guy now, because holy shit. Shit, does that look good. Look at this. Especially when you look at this side with that clip. Holy fuck, that's a lot of Zerkutai. <laughs> what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments your thoughts on this one. Um, this one might take a little while for us to uh, do a run on. Just because we are pretty much anti-pre-order at this point. And um, we have a lot of money on the table um, with stuff that's in production right now. Uh, we have nip lights, tall boys, fireballs. Um, those are all in production, you know, and we've spent our money on all those runs. Um, and then we have other projects in the works as well. So once we uh, recoup some funds and everything, we will uh, start working on this. So if you like this design, that's the first thing I want to know is, do you guys like this? Would you buy this knife? Because um, that's the first question. Because if you're not going to buy it, well, we probably aren't going to run it. So I want to know if you guys would buy the Bender. Personally, I think it's one of our best. It It's, I mean, just look at it. I don't, I don't know. If you're if you are in the same style styling space that I am with knives, um, this is absolutely fantastic. It really takes elements from a lot of our knives. Um, I see elements here of the stout. I see elements here of the buzz. I see elements in the handle of the nip, right, uh, and the chaser. Um, I see elements of the Kubi Royal in here from Colin. So um, it's kind of a melding of all the stuff we've done. Uh, and 
Yeah, it's real nice, Clark. This thing just steals the show, though. Holy fuck. So, let me know what you guys think. Um, obviously, if we, if we, when we do run these, this version's gonna be expensive. Maybe, maybe we'll do a pre-order just on the, the baller edition so that we know exactly how many to order because I don't want to order 10 or 20 and then have 50 people that want it. Um, I don't want to order 50 and then have 10 people who want it. You know what I mean? Um, also, I think this opens up a lot of options for dealers. Maybe there's some dealers that want, uh, exclusives of this knife and, um, you know, we can go completely ballered out or we can go completely subdued out. Whatever the dealer wants, whatever you guys want, you know, that's kind of the way we roll here. We try to listen. Um, so let us know what you think down below. I'm very curious um, what you guys think. I love it. I can tell you that right now. It is absolutely every bit as good as I was hoping it would be. Um, and we love working with Best Tech because they can do the lefty runs. And that really helps us out because we don't have to try to figure out how to get a lefty clip on here, a reversible clip. Whenever we do a run with somebody who can't do lefties, or I should say won't do a uh, lower minimum on lefties, we have to figure out how to add that filler tab, how to add, you know, the wire clip, or we got to do something to make it work because there's no way in hell that a company co-owned by a lefty is going to have right hand only knives. So it really is awesome with Best Tech because they'll do a minimum of 50 on a lefty run. So we can just order 25 of each version we do in lefty and it covers everybody, you know. Um, so I'm really proud of uh, working with Best Tech on that aspect. But one of the downsides to working with Best Tech is they're expensive. And partially it's because of the amazing quality that they do, right? I mean, look at this thing. So there's give and take. There's give and take. So we, I don't know the cost on this yet. You know, the stout we sold at 375 because with everything going into it, the bolster lock, the fat carbon, the Vanex, super clean. It is the most expensive knife we've ever uh, produced cost wise it is mind-bogglingly expensive to make i'm hoping this one is a little bit a little bit more affordable so we can you know obviously uh give you guys the the lower cost as well if we pay less you pay less that's just how it works we don't we don't price things based on what we think they should be you know uh worth looking at it you know we look at what we pay we add a certain margin to that to make it worth it and then that's what we charge so sometimes our knives are 100 bucks sometimes our knives are 199 sometimes they're 375 because it's a fucking super expensive build you know so uh once i know more on that i'll uh, give you guys numbers i guess that'll help but, um, you know, I would venture to guess it would be around $299 base for, uh, like, a version like this. Especially if we stick with S90V. If we get pushed to do um, Vanex, then, you know, the price is going to have to go up. Because that's just how it is. Um, I have had a bunch of people asking for LMAX lately. So that could be an option here. Although I really love S90V, but... Um, so basically what I'm saying is please leave all of your feedback down in the uh, comments. Obviously, it's going to be hard to give me feedback on pricing and stuff like that because we don't know it yet. But um, I would just estimate around 300 bucks and uh, give us feedback on the design, feedback on the versions you'd want to see. 
Do you want the baller version? All of that. Obviously, this one's going to cost quite a bit more. Again, we're going to price it based on the cost. We're not going to just say it's $600 because it should be $600. You know, maybe it will be. Maybe that's just how damn expensive it is to do all this. I can't remember what they quoted us on this. We usually just get prototypes the way we want them. And then we get the price and we go from there because... If we start trying to figure out tweaks based on price before we prototype, it just gets a little tricky because you don't necessarily get what you wanted. And then, so it's just kind of the method we go by. All right, I'm going to shut up. I love it. This is the Devo Knives Bender, as in she went on a bender. Um, it has to be alcohol related. I think that counts. And um, yeah. I love you guys. Colin, you are an absolute monster. Timing is good. My phone's ringing. I love you guys, and uh, I'll catch you later. Peace.